This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Girl, real talk. This whole, it's a new year, time to reinvent myself trash is not the vibe for 2024. You can find someone who loves you for you, as you are. You don't need to read a stack of self-help books, only eat sad salads, or like start meditating at 5 a.m. to be ready for dating. So yeah, my advice is to download Bumble and find someone who embraces you the way you are right now. Let me know how it goes. In today's episode, who owns the content that AI creates, all the ways that crypto broke in 2022, and I'm going to talk about stress. Enjoy. Welcome to the age of Jeremy. If this is your first time on this podcast, my name is Jeremy Quintanilla. I am your host. You can find me on all the social media platforms at age of Jeremy, except on LinkedIn. It's just Jeremy Quintanilla for some reason. And on Twitter, it is at age of Jeremy Q. Make sure that you follow me on Twitter because we will be doing a spaces here soon, a new space show that I'm going to do called Toth. Um, and that is all I'm going to say about it right now. So go and follow me on Twitter so you can be a part of that and engage with it and learn about all the cool stuff that I'm going to share with you, even though you don't know what that is yet. But if you look up Toth, you might be able to get an idea of some of the content that I'll be sharing with you. Um, the other thing is, if you don't know anything else about me besides what I just told you right now, I'm the owner of 3T Warrior Academy, the co-founder of it with Coach JV or CJV. So go check out our YouTube channel at 3T Warrior academy.com um, or you can go to youtube and just type in 32 warrior academy we have a um, 120 day challenge that's kicking it off it is everything that you need to get your shit together so if you want to be a part of that go to the website or go to the youtube channel to learn more become a part of that join our paid community and get your shit together with our 120 day challenge it is everything from fasting to fitness to journaling to meditation to nutrition to budgeting everything that you need to get your life together in 2023 is our 120 day challenge so make sure that you check that out also too if you are also want to be a part of our community you follow cjv our x royalty nft is launching on january 11th two days four hours 41 minutes 24 seconds. It is coming out. Our battle is not against anybody, but against our own consciousness. The 3T Warrior Academy is officially entering the Web3 space and putting down roots in the metaverse. X Royalty is aiming to become the ultimate gateway to an immersive experience for warriors in the physical and virtual world. If you want to know more about that amazingness, go to xroyalty.io. Check out the light paper. Check out the Discord. Be a part of the community, community, community. It's everything that I say. Everything is about being a part of a community, diving deep into it being a part of it it is amazing and the last community that i want to talk about is our age of radio addicted to podcasting community head on over to addicted to podcasting on facebook just go to facebook type in addicted to podcasting or go to one of the links in the episode description uh you sh it should be there you should be able to find it and go over there join it anybody can join you don't have to answer questions you don't have to do shit you just go in there you join if you have a podcast a youtube a space a clubhouse a linkedin show whatever the fuck you have you just post it in there and you share that and that you engage and if you don't don't have any of that go in there learn about new stuff be a part of the community we have some cool chat uh, community chats that i just opened up um for support and also to learn about production and things like that and again it's absolutely free and that one um is just going to be free forever eventually we'll try to talk to you about our uh age of radio free podcast network which you can also learn about at going to age of radio.com but that's enough about all the cool shit that is going on in Jeremy verse and age of radio verse. Let me talk to you about who owns the content AI creates. 
you don't know what chat GPT is or GitHub Copilot is, actually, I don't even want to say GitHub Copilot because I don't even know what the heck that is. I just learned about it when I was reading this. If you were in the development space, maybe you know about GitHub Copilot because it probably helps make code in some fashion is what I am guessing. Uh, let me just take a drink of my Pure Leaf brewed tea. If you didn't know, I stopped drinking soda. And any carbonated beverage is one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. AI products, products like GitHub, Copilot, and ChatGPT. Essentially what they do, ChatGPT is really cool. In fact, I got some content for from ChatGPT for what I want to talk about today about stress. So some of that comes from ChatGPT. I just type in a little question. That thing writes out me a whole blog post, a whole article, a whole book, a whole novel. All kinds of stuff it can do by writing stuff out, the questions that you ask. I asked it to make me tamales or how to make tamales the other night, and it gave me a fantastic, fantastic answer that I was really, really proud of and happy of if I had actually taken it and made the freaking tamales. But so the question is, who owns the content that AI creates? AI products like GitHub, Copilot, and ChatGPT, which ingest human content to make new material, raise novel, legal, and ethical issues. This is taken from Dina Bass on an article she released on January 9th. This is being recorded on January 9th. You're hearing it on January 10th. You can again find the links to these uh, articles that I read off of and talk about. Um, they are located in the episode description. So in November, a lawyer and computer programmer named Matthew Butterick sued the tech companies GitHub, Microsoft, and OpenAI, AI, saying a tool called GitHub Copilot, which GitHub is owned by Microsoft, that automatically generates computer code is essentially plagiarizing the work of human software developers in a way that violates their licenses, which based off of that one sentence, I would agree with him. The wrong parties in this case in Butterick's eyes or Buterick's eyes are the developers who worked on open source coding projects without explicitly given permission for their code to be used to help artificial intelligence learn to program on its own. This is an early skirmish in the battle how such AI tools scramble the ideas of ownership, copyright, and authenticity online. These tools had a banner year in 2022, and one likely result is that conflicts such as this will begin playing out in the earnest in 2023. Silicon Valley's current buzzword for co-pilot and other tools is generative AI. It's a term that you're going to want to know into the future. That's not in the article. That's me telling you that's a term that you're going to want to know in the future. This technology ingests large amounts of existing digital content to train itself to make similar stuff on its own. In addition to computer code, a generative AI is writing essays, making videos and images. Technologists have been predicting for years that these tools were the future, and OpenAI's releases last year of the latest versions of its images making tool Doll-E2 and its text generation tool ChatGPT made it seem as if the future was suddenly here. The content these tools produce isn't always convincing. Um, for instance, often include distorted faces and extra fingers, but they are far better than their predecessors. Copilot allows programmers to work faster by suggesting snippets of code as they type. Again, Copilot is a GitHub product, which again is owned by Microsoft. Um, allows programmers to work faster by suggesting snippets of code as they type. It's based on a subset of the technology that OpenAI used to make doll-e2 at GPT. Microsoft owns GitHub and is the, also the primary investor in OpenAI. Everything Copilot knows about programming comes from its analysis of code that was initially written by humans, and the lawsuit contends that it's violated the licenses of open source software whose code is publicly available for examination and use by using it in this matter. If you want to read the rest of the article, make sure that you check out the link below. But I would say that this does propose an interesting problem that I feel that we are going to, as a society, have to decide how that documentation and how that information is going to be used, um, especially who specifically owns that information, um, especially if that information is going to be utilized to make money. So for instance, let's say that I am using that code in private software development, those snippets from Copilot, that code comes over to me and then I put it in as what I'm choosing to use. Should those people be uh, make money from me using that code? It's a question that needs to be answered. I don't know what the right answer is, but I think that this is things that we need to start talking about. More importantly, I want to have more conversations about um, AI and the future of artificial intelligence because I think that it's going to be beneficial to humankind. But there are things that we have to figure out like this. 
also, if I'm going to be making money off of this podcast here, um, and I use some content from chat GPT, should I have to pay chat GPT for it? And should they have to send royalties out to where that information got scanned across the internet? In my mind, I would imagine that it made the information from the internet from free places where then I otherwise could have gone to if I didn't, and it just made it faster for me to get that information in front of me. So in that regard, I would say that I shouldn't have to pay anybody for it and no one should have to be paid for it. So those are some things that we have to think about of where that content is coming from. Is that content already licensed content? In this case, this Buterick gentleman makes the case that the snippets of the code, I'm assuming, is code that was part of their regular licenses and it's not, it's stuff that they own. But then if they were, I don't know, if they were working for someone, that code could be owned by, say, Microsoft. And Microsoft has every ability to s use those snippets how they want and then therefore these developers should have a union or some type of contract with Microsoft to make sure that they get extra compensation because the code that they write is going to be used and given away for free and not just in the context of Microsoft. If I'm understanding the full article, uh, the way that I think that I am, but I could be wrong. Um, leave, go ahead and go on Twitter age of Jeremy Q. Let me know what your thoughts are. Go to LinkedIn, uh, Jeremy Quintanilla. Um, you can follow me, probably find me by typing in age of Jeremy also, and let me know what your thoughts are, because this is a conversation that we we need to have and i'm not a lawyer um i'm just trying to think of it from my perspective and i definitely understand where he's feeling um i, I don't know exactly what he's feeling because i've never been in that spot but i actually feel for him because i think that he makes a decent argument and this is a conversation that we need to have in the future so moving on all the ways that crypto broke in 2022 well i wanted to talk about this but before i do i want to let you know that you should go check out our nft project because we are not broken from crypto in 2022 we are going to continue to go strong because i believe in the blockchain and i believe in the benefit of smart contracts especially the smart contracts and how they're utilized with non-fungible tokens and the blockchain i believe is going to be the railing system for a lot of the financial infrastructure in the future because distributive ledger technology works really 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 well. You should go research distributive technology, go understand blockchain from a software perspective and not from and from a non-software perspective, same from smart contracts and not just look as coins as a way to invest. There's something more meaningful there that we have to be aware of. And that's what I hope to get to you when I talk to you about crypto on this show. In 2021, everything came to a close crypto or as 2021 came to a close, by the way, this is from Bloomberg markets plus crypto by Kyle Kim. You can get, I'm sorry, the graphics are by Kyle Kim, the articles by Emily, Nicole, Olga Karif and Stacy Marie Ishmael. Go and check it out. The link is in my bio as 2021 came to a close crypto enthusiasts were brimming with optimism. After all, it had been a banner year. Non-fungible tokens or NFTs had crossed into the mainstream. Casual investors were talking to their friends about the relative merits of Bitcoin versus Ether. Some people even pretended to understand algorithmic stable coins. Fast forward a year on the primary topics of conversation among the most devout of the crypto faithful were more likely to be about Sam Bankman Freed, the disgraced crypto co-founder of the fallen FTX empire, or whether they'd ever retrieve the coins trapped on bankrupt exchanges and lending platforms after a series of big digital asset collapses. Crypto winner is what we usually call it in the space. Crypto winner is the industry term for the chill that descended on the market in 2022, and contagion was the name of the game. After the collapse of the Terra USD algorithmic stablecoin, major crypto players fell like Domino's, Three Arrows Capital, Voyager Digital, Celsius Network, FTX, and BlockFi. The hits keep coming, but it wasn't all downside, at least at first. The Super Bowl, one of the largest sporting events in the U.S., featured splashy celebratory field commercials for crypto companies like Coinbase, Crypto.com, and the aforementioned FTX, which was still riding high. There were crypto conferences in the Bahamas and Miami with sessions about the future of Bitcoin by day and glitzy parties by night, and the industry's prominence grew to Washington, a lavish political giving, and, and an army of lobbyists signaled its increasing influence there. Still... Crypto prices kept falling. Bitcoin, the largest token by market value, plunged more than 60 per cent. One of the central tenets of crypto and of the blockchain is the idea of decentralization. 
that no one entity is in charge and no one player could destabilize the rest. What 2020 showed more than once is that the digital asset ecosystem is significantly more interconnected and concentrated from even the busiest part participants might have realized and so that part's true because a lot of the coins and this is me talking about the article that's true because a lot of the coins are on larger exchanges that have manipulation um from i want to say capitalists i'm not sure if that's the right word um but they have larger manipulations and they are centralized so when we're talking about coinbase when we're talking about ftx when we're talking about bitru we're talking about kraken those are centralized places where markets are being created they're not markets that are being created 100 percent by us and one of the things when we look at decentralization one of the best places are on the swaps but the problem with the swaps is a lot of the swaps fell too because a lot of these underlying coins are still part of a centralized situation and the reason why the the swapping or the like um uh like uni swap and places like that is that because we are the liquidity holders when we stake our coins on that right like farming right so we hold the liquidity of those coins but those coins if they are still pegged and tied to other things that are inside of the system then it is in a centralized place and so that can be destabilized. And I'm not saying that decentralization is not able to be destabilized. That's not what I'm saying at all. It can be, as we have can see, but that destabilization is because of the interconnected of everything and of how it works. So that's one of the biggest problems. And the, one of the biggest and scariest parts of this, in my opinion, was the Terra ecosystem. It operated two major tokens, Luna, a cryptocurrency, and Terra USD, which was supposed to be a stable coin that tried to stay at $1 by maintaining a ratio with the amount of Luna in circulation. In May, UST began a steady decline away from its dollar peg, eventually taking tanking both coins to zero shockwaves from the implosion reverberated throughout the marking set in the stage for more blowups in the weeks and months that followed yada 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 because then everything continued to collapse like uh with ftx at the end and so <clears throat> the point that i am trying to explain here excuse me the point that i'm trying to explain in this is that we are not able to ever know anything 100 percent these are new markets. They are new ecosystems. So I will always recommend people be cautious in these. Like I say to even people that are on our academy, please be cautious and put them in things um, that I guess to in a sense have some type of under utility inside of them. It would have been difficult to see FTX. It would have been difficult to see Terra. Um, but I think that if if um I'm not I didn't own any Luna, I didn't own any Terra, it wasn't something that I was interested in. For full disclosure, the only cryptocurrencies that I own are Bitcoin, Ether, um, uh XLM is my major holder, and then XRP. Those are really the only coins that I like. Occasionally I'll buy some crow, depending. I don't get caught up to it in a bunch. I'm very specific on the things that I want. And I don't like over diversifying, only like putting my money to things that I think could be big wins. And to me, something like XRP and XLM solve a really good problem and they're ran really, really well. And I can see who runs them. I <clears throat> can be a part of that community. I can engage in it. Um, and I, I do trust those companies. Does that mean that they're not going to not fail? Of course not. I don't know. No one knows the future. We're not able to see everything that's behind it, but there has been some big collapses. So please be careful. Um, but I, I don't, I think this is going to be good for the industry. Um, a lot of people want there to be some type of regulation. If things are going to stay on a full centralization and it cannot be governed in a sense from the people by the people for the people, then it's going to have to be in some way regulated by the people that we vote into pay power, which aren't necessarily always doing what's best for the people. But you should go and understand cryptocurrency because I guarantee you it's not going away. We're putting our NFT project out there to build really good utility. It's going to be on the XRP ledger. It's going to be an amazing project. Um, and could the price of those go down if XRP goes down? Of course, because it's part of XRP. But you get something outside of just the speculation and the value by getting access to the inner workings um, of our 
um, uh, Three Two Warrior Academy. You get access to virtual conferences. You get the ability to possibly get into our in-person conference. So there are all kinds of benefits for what's going on. And so those are the types of things that we're going to see a lot of this move to is to create utility. This was a great article that they did. I agree with everything that they are pointing out. And I think people need to understand the understand one thing: centralization, decentralization. You have to understand non-fungible tokens. You have to figure out how to understand for the most part, not like how to write a blockchain or create a blockchain, but what a blockchain is, how smart contracts work, how this cryptocurrency works, because it is not going away. Make sure that you check out this article. It's all the ways that crypto broke in 2022. Link is in the bio. You will need a Bloomberg um, subscription. I don't, I'm not sponsored by them. I just like their um, news articles from Bloomberg and we'll be right back after this break. Girl, real talk. This whole it's a new year, time to reinvent myself trash is not the vibe for 2024. You can find someone who loves you for you, as you are. You don't need to read a stack of self-help books, only eat sad salads, or like start meditating at 5 a.m. to be ready for dating. So yeah, my advice is to download Bumble and find someone who embraces you the way you are right now. Let me know how it goes. Do you want to stay up to date with the messiest drama on the internet? Or what about those crazy viral challenges? Then be sure to tune in to TMZ Verified, the podcast. I'm Wild. I'm Steph. And each week we're either breaking down the spicy viral stories or we're hanging out with the most popular influencers around. Tana Mojo is in the building. I don't even know if they're hating. They're probably just telling the truth, but we love the haters too. Sophia Franklin. Yeah, I mean, we can talk, but like, let's be real with each other, you know? Bryce Hall is here, y'all. Make some noise, people. I'm, I'm single, by the way. Right. So if you like viral drama, influencer culture, and just overall hot messness, check out new episodes of TMZ Verified every Thursday right here on Spotify. Welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in with The Age of Jeremy. Uh, I want to again remind you that our NFT project goes live January 11th. Uh, make sure that you tune in to our non-fungible show. I was on it last Wednesday. Um, it's a show on our YouTube Academy network. I will be on the show again this Wednesday talking about it with Selman and the boys from Collecti um, and Jackie, the, I guess, Queen Jackie from our crypto team. Um, and so um, I wanted to just remind you to check in on that. So go to YouTube right now. Even if you have to stop this, go to 3 2 War Academy, subscribe. I'd really greatly appreciate it. Uh, so that being said, stress, because we have so much stuff going on in our academy, I've been thinking a lot about stress because last week, my Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays, they're like from 6.30 in the morning till 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Not necessarily always doing work work. Sometimes it's just a lot of meetings. Sometimes it's getting caught up on doing this podcast looking at articles, you know, doing a better job researching articles for this show to talk about on the things that I think that are important. Uh, maybe it's working on my social media. Maybe it's working on Merlin. Maybe it's working on Collecti. There's so much stuff that's going on. And again, the only way that you can stay up to date on most of this is follow me on Twitter at Age of Jeremy Q or LinkedIn at Jeremy Quintanilla or type in Age of Jeremy. But I wanted to talk a lot of, more about stress because stress is something that I don't handle well because I get cranky. And so I was talking on a YouTube or I'm sorry, on a TikTok about this, talking about like, what are the things that you should do if you're getting stressed? So I want to talk about the things that you need to notify, like look into yourself about with stress. And then I want to talk about um, some of the things that stress does to your body, I guess. And then some of the things that I'm doing to help relieve stress and working on and things that maybe um, the internet recommends that you could do to relieve some of that stress that I might take into consideration. So the first thing that I had to realize was what does it mean when I'm under a lot of stress and how does that affect me? I think that this is going to be different for everybody, but let me tell you what it is for me. So one of the things that causes me gra great amount of stress, one is not knowing the workload that I have or what is happening in the future. And, and right. So like me not writing something down, maybe not having everything on my calendar, maybe not seeing that I'm getting this stuff done because I'm not marking it off properly. And I'm just moving with the motions and going with the flow and trying to do everything possible. And so that can take a really big toll, at least on me, because I'm kind of like going at all cylinders, but not knowing really where I'm going. And so that's one of the things that causes a lot of stress for me. But wh how, what does that do? Well, it makes it difficult for me to sleep. That's a big one. Can't sleep because I'm always thinking about it. 
and I get a little bit cranky to people that annoy me. Um, and I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. It's not that people are annoying me. It's that it, things that usually I kind of can like take, they become unbearably unbearable to me at that time. Like one of the things that's very frustrating for me that I do not like, I do not like on prompt. I do not like unprompted meetings. I think that sometimes people make everything an emergency. They make it so that they have to get it done right now because they're not able to manage and plan their time. And so I don't like it when people like try to do something that was out of what I was trying to do. I do not like that. I've worked really hard not to have that in my life and I do not appreciate it, which is different than an emergency. If an emergency, comes up yeah there's emergencies like that have to be done like so instance we have to get our terms and use done and our privacy policy done for collecting by tomorrow that's something that i don't mind jackie sending it to me she says jeremy you have to read this tonight that i don't mind because that is a real emergency but i'm talking about if it's not a real actual emergency it should be put into our workload at the right pace and the right time so <clears throat> normally when those things frustrate me i can usually manage through them because it's something that frustrates me but i can manage through how to deal with the situation or not get frustrated at the person or whatever. But when I'm not, when I'm not, when I'm under a lot of stress because of everything else that's going on, that tolls on me and then I become an asshole. So it's almost like I become a cranky person to people when they fluff my feathers where I normally wouldn't otherwise. You know, with the stuff that's going on with Collecti, I got upset at some of the people that we were discussing stuff with in Collecti and I had to walk away because because of that added stress, I was more likely to get more frustrated, mad, blow up and I didn't want to be a part of that. So I just took myself out of the situation where normally if I didn't have that extra added stress or was managing my stress properly, that wouldn't happen. Right. And so then that also means me to be kind of rude to maybe my wife or to my dogs or my niece or whatever the case is. And I don't want that. So I know by thinking about it, looking at it, being mindful of what's happening with those situations are going on, that I now kind of know and understand the things that are adding into that stress. So that's the first thing you have to know. What are the things that make you stress stress? Right. And then how do you either manage those? And then also if you are managing those, but there's nothing to get around that added workload or that added, uh, uh, um, um, that added, uh, frustration, how can you deal with that as it comes up? Right. And so that's one of the biggest things that I've had to realize this year and have had to, you know, manage because stress can have a wide range of effects on health, both physical and mental, right? And so you can have physical symptoms like stress can cause a variety of physical problems like a headache, muscle tension, pain, fatigue, sleep problems, stomach problems. Like for me, the main one that I get is the sleep problems, right? I get really, I cannot sleep at all. My muscles get tense, right? And, and then even though you can't sleep, you're fatigued because you're doing too much, right? And that can lead into mental health impact. You know, the stress may contribute to development of worsening conditions. So like if you have depression or post-traumatic stress disorder and anxiety, that added stress can um, amplify those situations. And we need to be mindful of that. Chronic stress has been linked to an increased risk of developing conditions such as high blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke. And for me, I have type 1 diabetes, so I'm constantly thinking about that. And as man, I don't want to add, I already have the added, you know, frust frustration on my heart managing it with diabetes or diabetes. What happens with that added cardio cardiovascular stress from just the normal days stuff that's going on in my life that I can't manage? And then immune system, your stress can have an impact on your immune system, making a person more susceptible to illness and infection. Um, so these are things that we really need to think about, especially in an age of mental, you know, stress or um, uh, mental health issues, right? I think that the mental health issues are, in my opinion, may be getting worse. I don't know. I haven't looked at any statistics on this, but let's just say that they're getting worse, right? That could be because of, of the stress that we put on ourselves and us not being able to manage it. So for me, to help manage that stress, one of the things that I know that I need to do is I need to get at least that seven hours of sleep, seven and a half. The last week, um, I was hitting like five hours, uh, five and a half hours, and that just does not, I just get so much more cranky. It's so much easier to snap at people. It's so much harder to get work done, and it does not benefit anybody where if I like don't do the work and just get the rest, I can do twice the work because I'm refreshed. Right. So that that sleep for me, that part of self-care is so important for me and I'm realizing it. The other thing, too, for me, again, I, I'm going to go for some of the things for me. Then I'm going to take you some of these things that the Internet recommends. But for me, 
It's making sure that I have time with my wife in some capacity. Now, we don't have to. In fact, I'm on a diligent mission to be spending even more time at home this year, um, making the house more comfortable, getting stuff for the house, having more people over for the house or at the house to do stuff with. I'm very adamant about that. But if I don't have so so I'm not saying that me and my wife have to go places. But if me and my wife want to hang out at our house, you know, I want to add, I, I need to have that because if I don't have that, then I get frustrated because I don't get to see a lot of people and the people that I get to see is my wife. And so I would like to hang out with her because she's the reason why I married her because I enjoy being with her. Right. And so that is something that I've noticed that if I do not have at least some of that conversation or have that openness or that communication with her, then that leads me to be more cranky and not productive in the other things that I'm trying to do. And then meditation. Meditation um, is super, super beneficial for me um, and and being and doing my religious reading, um, whether that's a sutra, um, some other kind of religious text for insightfulness, studying meditation, even if I don't get to do that every day. I, I don't know if it needs to happen every day. I don't know. I would like for it to happen every day. I don't know if I can physically make it happen every day. But a few times a week last week, I didn't get a chance for it at all. And that was so frustrating, so stressful you know, and just did not work. Right. And then, so, so making sure that I have time for that. And then the last one is make sure that I have time to do some of the things that I enjoy, whether that's reading, coding, playing video games, going for walks, spending time with my dogs, you know, seven days doesn't seem like a lot, but when it's going and all you're doing is working to separate yourself for a little bit of time to do some of those hobbies that you like, like working. I also like working out. I didn't get to work out as much as I would have liked to last week. And that also helps me reduce some of that stress. So those are some of the things that work really, really well for me. And one of the things that I'm also going to be adding is stretching before bed every night. I read that or watched a video yesterday while I was working out that was like, we need a stretch, right? For our muscles and everything like that. But it's actually better to not stress, stretch before you work out. And it's better to stretch before bed. So getting into a regular stretching nightly routine before bed, I believe that will also help with my sleep, which then will also help with my stress because the, the better that you're rested and sleep, the more um, aware you are. And I guess alert to take on all of the stuff that happens during a day. And that's where I want to be. So those are the things that I'm doing, but I want to recommend some of the things that the uh, internet recommends, right? So there are many strategies that can be helpful for coping with work and life stress. Um, Practice good self-care is what they say. They do mention sleep in here. So to make sure to take care of your physical and mental health. Um, I go and see, uh, I don't go and see my therapist as much as I used to in the past. Um, But I think mental health is really good. And for me, mental health is being able to communicate things with my wife when I feel them arise, with my business partner when I feel them arise, with my niece and be emotionally open to people explaining how I feel. And that helps with my mental health, um, eating a healthy diet and engaging in regular physical uh, activity. It says here, make time for relaxation and hobbies. So schedule time for activities that you enjoy and that help you relax, such as hobbies, spending time with friends and family or pursuing creative interests. Uh, one of the other ones is set boundaries and learn to say no to additional responsibilities or tasks that are not essential or that you do not have time or energy to handle. That is actually one that I need to add onto my list because I do not set strong enough boundaries. Practice stress reduction techniques. Um, This is managing stress through deep breathing, meditation, or progressive muscle relaxation. I'm not 100% sure what progressive muscle relaxation is, so I think that'd be interesting if one of you guys want to go research it and hit me up on Twitter. Let me know what that is. Again, Twitter is at Age of Jeremy Q. Experiment with different techniques to find what works best for you. Seek support. Don't be afraid to reach out to friends, family, or mental health professionals. This one's actually very beneficial. Um, I don't have this as part of my regular repertoire of things, but I have noticed that like, if we're dealing with a lot, you don't have to deal with it on your own. At least you don't have to deal with how you feel about it on your own. You would be surprised that other people, at least in, in, for the people that I know, I don't know if you have close friends, I think that they would rather you open up and talk to them and be open with them, have a good communication with them. Same thing goes for a partner. Maybe the partner might be, if it's about the partner, it might be difficult, but if it's not about the partner, um, then to open up about that, they might even find it more beneficial because you're sharing your feelings and your emotions and how we feel about things. And we can... And sometimes, you know, sometimes when I say how I feel about things and I just get it off my chest, it actually helps me feel better. I don't necessarily always have to have an answer provided. Just sharing how I'm feeling and being open about it. I'm just sharing this. I'm not looking for any advice. I just want to talk about this so I can understand it better. That can be very, very beneficial. Learn to manage your time. Again, 
create a schedule to try to stick with it as much as possible. When I'm not doing that as consistent as I should be or as strong as I should be, that causes all kinds of anxiety and stress for me. So I need to make sure that I'm doing better at that. Take breaks. Make sure to take breaks throughout the day to rest and recharge. I do not do that. I've been working. It's 418 now. Um, I started and have not stopped except to eat a bowl of ramen. And I was doing a Twitter spaces when I was eating that bowl of ramen. Um, I started at about seven. So seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three. So it's about nine hours, pretty nine and a half hours straight right now without a slight chance to recharge. But usually what will happen is I'll go to the gym. I'll feel better. And then I'll do some more stuff. Like after come home, read that privacy policy and the terms of use for collecti. Um, I'm sorry for X royalty. I need to stop using those interchangeably. <laughs> um, so, uh, so taking breaks So make sure that you take breaks, meditate during those breaks, uh, relax. Remember it's important to care of yourself and manage stress because if you do not, you are going to, in my opinion, my fear is to put ourselves in early grades and I want to last as long as I can. And I want you to last as long as you can. So you can continue to listen to this podcast. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So that you can have a meaningful life with the people that you care about and the people that you love. And that's what life should be about. It shouldn't just be about always working the most important things that i have learned is spending time with um uh, coach jv um with may with dustin with jackie with the 3t team having good relationships with my niece and my wife having a good relationship with my mom my grandparents building those distance cousins spending more time with them trying to build those relationships hanging out with my dogs I think that that's really what life is about. At least that's how I'm starting to think about it as I get older. I mean, I don't know if that's 100% what it is or what it's about, but I feel a lot happier if the goal is to be happy doing those things and having other people in my life seems to make me happy. So I want you to be around so that you can experience that and your loved ones can experience being around you. So remember, as I always say, be thankful, grateful, and kind. Please let me know what you think of this podcast. Leave a uh, like this podcast, subscribe to it, leave a comment, go to Twitter, go to LinkedIn, go somewhere. Let me know how you're feeling. I love having conversations with everybody. I love you. Remember, be thankful, grateful, and kind, and we'll talk with you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you liked this episode, go ahead and leave a five-star review and uh, let me know what you think of it. Uh, do that if your podcatcher allows it to. If your podcatcher doesn't allow you to do that, just like this podcast and subscribe to it so you can be notified when this podcast goes live. Also, I'm redoing the Age of Jeremy website. We'll be putting blogs on there. Go to ageofjeremy.com comps check that out and don't forget i do have a youtube channel i put quotes up in the air um so because occasionally we put out episodes on there or i do but 3t warrior academy we always do the opening song was brave faces everyone by spanish love songs closing song is illuminati hotties threatening each other recapitalism i use neumann microphones zoom l8 to record in steinberg cubase waves plugins and remember one last time be thankful grateful and kind we'll talk with you next time bye Okay, everybody, it's Michael E. Cullen II. And I'm Sesame Encarta from the All Too Real 2 podcast. We're passionate about movies, TV, and pretty much all things pop culture. Dive into the chaos of failed sitcoms, direct-to-video sequels, and the quirky realms of cinema and TV. Join us every Thursday for your dose of All Too Real 2 entertainment. We'll guide you through debates like whether Howard the Duck qualifies as a superhero. Ponder if Larry the Cable Guy could be the new rock 
Arnold or Schwarzenegger. Discover if some shows and movies should have stayed in the cutting room. Ever heard of a sitcom featuring that dictator with the funny mustache? Well, we watched it. We're dedicated to unraveling the peculiarities of pop culture, sometimes with awesome guests. So, if you're into the eccentric world of pop culture, listen and subscribe to All Too Real 2. Available wherever you find podcasts and on Age of Radio.